All right, so imagine this. You spend hours and hours, maybe even days, writing a blog post for this killer keyword that you found. You're basically an expert in this space, and all of the existing competition is just utter garbage, so you're feeling particularly good about this post. You format the post properly, you write more content than the competition, and you create an overall better resource than anything else that exists at the time. After writing, editing, and proofreading the post, you excitedly push it live and then sit there patiently and wait for it to outrank the garbage that exists there in the SERPs. But the thing is, you don't outrank them. Weeks pass, then a few months pass. Your post sees some slight ranking improvements, but it's nothing like you'd hoped, and it's still being beaten out by some of the most garbage posts that you've ever seen. This is a pain that literally every blogger has experienced at some point in their careers, and man does it suck. Why exactly does this happen though? Is there a reason why these supposed terrible posts beat out your new great post? And is there anything that you can do? Now, a lot comes into play here, and there isn't just one straightforward answer that I can give you. So let's look at some of the reasons why a post like this may be outranking a post like this. So first of all, the easy answers. Now, not all of these may be applicable to your exact situation, but they all need to be considered when you run into this problem. So first of all, your competitor has more links than you. Now, this is one of the most important aspects by a long shot. And anytime anybody asks me why their post is being beaten out by another post or several other posts, the first thing that I do, besides just giving a quick glance at the content, is looking at the amount of links that that post has and the amount of links that all of the other posts have. I've seen quite a few people say that links aren't that important and that you don't need to focus on them, and that's just plain wrong. A study carried out by Backlinko shows a strong correlation between a post's rankings and the backlinks to both that post and the backlinks to the top-level domain. In fact, the number one results have, on average, 3.8 times more backlinks than the results that are ranking from number two to number 10. So the first thing that you need to do is check and see if that post has a lot of links to it or if it's on a domain that has a very strong backlink profile. Now this is pretty easy to do. You just go into any SEO tool like Ahrefs, SEMrush, anything like that, put in the page and boom, check out the links. And while you're there, you can check out the links to the entire domain as well. Now these SEO tools won't show you every link that exists. However, there's a really good chance that they will show most, if not all, all of the important authoritative links that actually matter. So what do you see? Does their page have one or several backlinks to it? That's probably a reason why they're outranking you. The strength of a good backlink profile cannot be overlooked. Now, if the individual page doesn't have any backlinks, does the domain that it's on have a lot of backlinks itself? Some websites, especially really big authoritative ones from big online publishers, are able to get by off of their domain authority alone. Now I can give you countless examples of posts that have been written by these authoritative publishing sites that are just downright terrible, but it doesn't matter. They have the backlinks. Now, this is why I just simply avoid writing for these topics that have already been covered by these big authoritative publishers. It's not worth my time. If you're being beaten out by another website, but your SEO tool doesn't show any backlinks, there is a chance that this website is using a PBN and they're simply blocking crawlers from crawling those links. Now, this isn't extremely common, but it doesn't happen very infrequently in a lot of the more high ticket competitive niches, and it's done by both small and big sites alike. So if backlinks are why they're outranking you, what do you do? Well, just buy or build links. It's that simple. Now, if the post itself is very high ticket and competition is massive, but the potential traffic is insane, then you should probably focus on building individual links to that specific page. However, if you're constantly being beaten out by these garbage sites with a lot of links, then you might want to build more links to your just domain in general. So there's no magic bullet or number of backlinks that'll get you to rank in this situation, but it's one of the best things that you can possibly do. Now, I also want to add that domain age is a pretty important factor that ties into this idea. And if you have a very new domain that doesn't have have a proven track record, then it's going to be harder for you to rank. You're basically stuck 
in the Google sandbox. And this is just something that everybody has to deal with. A way you could avoid it is by buying an expired domain that already has some authority on it. Um, but yeah, that's a thing. Number two, your post is still ranking. Now, SEO involves patience and lots of it. This is why I'll never work for an SEO agency. People just don't understand that ranking takes a very, very long time. Now, many times I'll have a good idea of whether or not my post is going to rank within a couple of months, but that's not always the case. So let me show you this post right here. This is currently the number three post on my entire website. For simplicity's sake, I'll go ahead and say I published this post on March 1st. For months, this page went days getting only one, two, maybe five clicks per day. Nothing to write home about, and it was very consistently towards the bottom of the second page. September 1st, it started to get a little bit of traction, and this is five months after I published it, um, but really not really breaching 10 clicks per day and still not that great. Then, about midway through January, finally and randomly, it shot up in the SERPs and started ranking at the bottom of the first page and started netting me between 50 and 100 clicks per day. The improvements don't stop there though. Even now, breaching into May, it's a really bad day for this post if it doesn't reach well over 100 clicks per day. This entire process took over a year for this post to get where it is in the SERPs now. I didn't do anything special to it, it's just the Google dance. Even now I'm being outranked by objectively worse posts than mine, and I might have to build a few links to this page in order to push it above them. While this post is one of the more extreme examples, I have had dozens of posts that have played the long con. So don't get too caught up on a post not ranking because it very well might in the future. Third reason why they're possibly beating you is because your content simply is not as good. Sometimes I'll hear somebody say their content is much better than the competitors, but when I look at it, that's not the case at all. A big challenge with SEO is that a lot of things are strictly subjective. While your post may look great to you, to somebody else, it may look not that way. Now the biggest driving force behind this fallacy is content length. Just because your content is longer than a competitor's does not mean that it's better. Sure, longer content does tend to rank better and get more organic traffic, but that's correlation, not causation. It's like this tweet that I saw that's like, study shows that people with horses live longer. The implied meaning is that owning a horse makes you live longer. The actual meaning is that if you can own a horse, you can afford health insurance. Longer articles do typically allow for more depth in the content and for more keywords to actually rank in the SERPs, but Google isn't going to rank your post higher just because it's a thousand words longer than the competitors. I see so many posts that have nonsense added on to the end of them, and this is especially prominent in like income school type websites that are just total nonsense. It's not relevant at all, and these posts don't rank worth anything. If you're going to put content in a post, it needs to be relevant. Aside from the length of the post, there's the inclusion of LSI keywords, keyword density, the depth of the material, and the overall helpfulness of the post. There's a lot of different factors that go into determining whether your post is going to rank or not. You may think that your content is better, but if a competitor has been beating you for a very long time and they don't have any good links, then it's probably not much better. So those are the three main reasons behind why a post wouldn't be ranking that well. And if your post is being beaten out by utter garbage, then there's a very good chance that you're falling victim to one or multiple of those things. However, there's also answers to this question that aren't as simple, and it's actually pretty hard to quantify these. So the fourth reason why you may not be ranking is that you don't match the search intent that Google has recognized. So over time, Google has gotten really good at identifying search intent. And what this means is that they're able to identify the type of content that someone is searching for based off of their search term. They'll determine whether somebody wants a long detailed guide, a short list, a recipe, a directory, or any other type of content based off of their search query. And if you don't match that search intent that Google has determined, you will have a very hard time ranking for that keyword. So let's get the example of Orlando Chinese restaurants. So if someone's searches for Orlando Chinese restaurants, it's going to be pretty obvious that they're searching for a list of 
Chinese restaurants in Orlando. That's the content that they want. So the top search result isn't going to be a detailed analysis of the Chinese restaurant market in Orlando. It's going to be a list of the top five, top 10 Chinese restaurants in the area. This discrepancy in search intent is pretty obvious, but it's not always this obvious. In fact, I've fallen victim to this many times. So the best way to avoid writing the wrong piece of content for a specific keyword is to just simply look at what's already ranking for that keyword. If what's ranking are long guides, then go ahead and write a long guide as well. However, if it's short little lists that are ranking, then you'd probably want to mimic that. It's pretty straightforward. And then the fifth reason why you may be being beaten out by garbage is Google's dumb. I'm sorry, but I just have to put this one in here. Sometimes Google is just dumb and it doesn't rank posts that should be ranking. All right, Google's not dumb, but you have to remember that it has a very, very complex algorithm behind it that determines whether or not a post should rank based off of a ton of different factors. It's also important to remember that Google is not a human. It's a machine and it simply cannot understand your content in the way that a human can. So while you may have a really, really good piece of content, it's possible that Google just interprets it incorrectly or sees some other factors that makes it not rank the post as well as it should be. Now, it's pretty difficult to know exactly what would cause this. Impossible even. However, if you have a really good piece of content, a very nice and diversified backlink profile, you bring something new to the table with your content, and you match the proper search intent, and you wait a long time, you really shouldn't run into this problem and you should get the rankings that you deserve. But this is SEO, baby. You never know exactly what you're going to get and that's half the fun. So guys, I wanna thank you for watching this video. If you're new to the channel or you just haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you get updated whenever I upload a new video. Also, you'll probably wanna check out those videos over there. Those are pretty sweet. Olive and I, we say bye. Thanks for watching, thanks for the love. Peace out, right?